Every teacher was once a student. Every professional was once an amateur. The history of the emergence and development of language radio stations is also no exception to this rule. Many radio stations that received broadcasting licenses in the early 1920s in the United States, Canada, Europe, Brazil, or Argentina originated either before or during World War I as experimental or educational radio telegraph communication stations with temporary experimental licenses. Dot. They were created both by lone engineers, inventors, and radio enthusiasts in research laboratories at universities starting from 1909.12. It was at this time that the first radio stations appeared, which began to experiment with the transmission of voice and music on the radio and even lead irregular transmissions. The testimony of contemporaries and local mass media about the regular radio broadcasts of such radio stations can be accepted with varying degrees of credibility, but the fact is that they existed. Radio station with call sign 2XG, started by Lee De Forest in New York, began daily experimental broadcasting in 1916. Radio station 1XE in Medford, Massachusetts. Being experimental, it began broadcasting in 1917. Radio station 8MK began daily broadcasting on August 20, 1920. The old world and even the countries of Latin America were not far behind. The Dutch company Nederlandsche Radio Industry and its engineer owner Hanso Itzada made their first regular entertainment radio broadcast on 6 November 1919 over station PCGG from their workshop in The Hague, in the Young Republic of Czechoslovakia, on October 28, 1919, in Prague. From a military unit, the Watchtower radio station began to conduct experimental broadcasts from May 20. On a permanent basis, on February 23, 1920, the voice of radio station 2MT, created by Giuliano Marconi, was first heard on the airwaves of Great Britain. On August 27, 1920, the radio station Law Radio Argentina was broadcast for the first time in Buenos Aires, which, surprisingly, still exists today. However, these were still experimental and irregular transmissions without any permits for regular radio broadcasting. Later in the West they were called Pirates, and in the USSR, Radio Hooligans. The first official regular commercial station is KDKA radio station in Pittsburgh, United States of America. On October 27, 1920, it received a limited commercial license and began to conduct regular radio broadcasts twice a week. The repertoire included language programs and music. However, with the KDKA championship, not everything is so clear-cut. For two years from the end of the First World War to this date, at least a dozen radio stations around the world conducted first experimental and then regular radio broadcasts. The only difference from the Pittsburgh radio station was only that they were all experimental, had experimental licenses and were not yet certified and therefore did not have permission for regular radio transmissions from the governments of their countries. After all, like KDKA itself from the time of its creation in 1916 until October 1920. At first, interest in the new mass media was rather weak. Radio receivers were expensive, enthusiasm for them looked like enthusiasm for another fashionable toy which will soon get tired of everyone and soon pass away. And besides, few people at that time understood the revolutionary essence of this ingenious technical invention as a new type of mass media. Let's dive into the realities of life of that era to better understand it all. So, at that time, 
Newspapers and magazines were the only means of regular communication with the world and the only means of mass information available to all sections of the population. Even the already fashionable and popular cinematography was more of an entertainment rather than an information or educational phenomenon. The theater, phonograph and gramophone were also available only to the elite of society. It is not surprising that the press did not see a competitor in radio until the very middle of the 20s. But, on November 2, 1920, two radio stations in the United States, KDKA and 8MK, conducted live radio reports on the inauguration of the new President of the United States following the results of the presidential election. And this caused a huge interest in radio in the society. After that, new commercial radio stations began to appear like mushrooms after a warm summer rain. After only two years, their number in the United States increased to more than 500. The radio boom spread to poor Europe destroyed by the First World War, to the relatively wealthy countries of South and Central America at the time and even to the backward and extremely poor countries of Asia and Africa. In 1920, new radio studios and powerful transmitters were built in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and Buenos Aires, Argentina. In 1921, a radio studio was opened in Paris, the transmitter was mounted on the Eiffel Tower. In the same year, regular radio broadcasts also began in Sydney, Australia, and New Zealand. In 1922, radio transmitters were operational in London and Manchester, Great Britain, Moscow, USSR, Montreal, Canada, Chile, Cuba, and even Puerto Rico. 1923, Berlin, Germany. Colombo, Sri Lanka, Prague, Czechoslovakia, Mexico, Mexico, Tampere, Finland, Shanghai, China, Madrid, Spain, 1924, Rome, Italy, Kharkiv, Ukraine, Belgrade, Serbia, Blumenthal, Netherlands, Stockholm, Sweden, Vienna, Austria, 1925 year, Copenhagen, Denmark, Riga, Latvia, Budapest, Hungary, Bucharest, Romania, Tokyo, Japan. This is how the radio boom began and analog radio very quickly became the most popular means of mass information. The peak of its development came in the 30s and 50s and lasted until the early 60s, when it was overtaken by television. However, it continued to be quite popular until the beginning of the 21st century, when the rapid development of computer technologies began to displace not only radio broadcasting, but also television. But we will talk about this in the next series.